Hello, it's Dr. Abstract, and we're going through the docs, and we're going to look at a tile today. So let's go to the Zim site, zimjs.com, press on the docs, type in tile, and see what we've got for the tile. Now basically, we're tiling an object, and we can provide the rows and columns. There's two uses. One is art, where we tile you know, just to make patterns, and the other is layout, where we might want to tile unique things and control those. So there's uh, two different settings. One is uh, unique and one's not unique. So the first is art, where we're cloning things, and the next is unique, where we're laying things out. There's a good example of that, but why don't we try the art version first? So we're going to go into some code. We're in Zim, cat02, and we're going to make a tile. New tile. We can tile a circle, for instance. A new circle. And we will um, choose five of these by four. So five columns, four rows, and then the cell spacing, or, or well, <laughs> from the HTML world, uh, the spacing h is next so that be 20 and the spacing v vertical spacing will do 22 and we shall dot center this on stage so there we go let's have a look in a browser there they are tiled for us and this is a container that now holds all of these things just watch if you put a dot outline on that you'll see that it's a little bit out, if we can spell outline, might not be quite as you expected. It's not, oh yeah, that's good. Okay, it is as, it, it's, it's not as I expected. I expected something slightly different. I expected the zero, zero to be right here. I think we adjusted that. So zero, zero and the registration point, top left corner of our tile there. So no problem. All right, uh, we can, because this is a container, we can do things nicely to it with a container. We can loop through it, or we can even dot animate this. If we animate it and we say props, for instance, scale colon two, uh, that would animate the, the whole of the tile uh, bigger by two. But if we add sequence like this, colon I don't know, point one or something like that, then we get something different. Let's loop this to loop colon true, and we'll even do a rewind colon true on that. The order in here doesn't matter because that's the Zimduo technique where we're specifying the parameters via an object. Okay, a boo boo. So I would imagine we've got an error of some sort here in the console. Oh, I'm Sorry about that. U is undefined. I don't know. Uh, oh, um, we didn't define anything because we forgot to dot the animate on there. All right, let's try it again. So there it goes, although that's not terribly impressive because we don't have a border on those, but you can see that we're animating all of the parts of that tile if we do put a border on it. Uh, by the way, we could put colors in here, red, green, blue, and give it a border, dark. Let's see it now. And this is that art that I was talking about, or almost the art. What did we do wrong? I don't see anything that we did wrong. F12. Oh, that's the radius. So, uh, 50, I guess if we put in some colors for a radius, we don't get much. All right, so here's that art that we were talking about where we can um, animate all of the things in the tile. We can also loop through the tile very easily as well with the Zim loop. So that would be uh, const tile is equal to that. And we can loop through and do something to it. For instance, tile toil. <laughs> dot loop um, and in here we get the element or the item and we can use an arrow function there so we collect each item in the tile just as if it were any container we collect the items and we can do something like 
item dot scale is equal to or item dot ska will do and we'll give this a ran each of these random scale now we wouldn't really have to do this but I'm just showing you so a scale between how about 0.5 and 1.5 so now all of those uh, items will start with a different scale so there they are all starting with different scales and yeah, animating how I'll make Maybe it's just uh, better if we don't animate for now, just to show you the randomizing of that. Okay, so a bunch of random colors, random scales. Of course, we could, instead of doing 50 here, we could put in a min of 20 and a max of 50, like that. So what's happening is when we clone the circle, the tile is going to clone the circle. When it gets cloned, clone has in it something that checks for min and max. These are the zim v values. Checks for min and maxes, checks for random, or we could do a series. If we did a series, it looks like this, series and round brackets. And then we're not going to get random colors. We're going to get a series of colors. From with that min and max, and we're no longer going to loop. But just showing you to, that we could loop. Uh, by the way, if you ever remove anything in a loop, remember to loop backwards. So if you remove something in the loop, uh, true, that that would loop backwards. Just so you know, just like any container. So we refresh here, and now what are we getting? We're getting a random size range. You can see, look at the alignment though, the alignment's all top and it looks like left. So if you're going to do something like this, you would want to set the alignment of the tile, which is a parameter. And if we wanted to set the alignment of the tile, then we would probably drop down into the Zim Duo technique because align B and align H, I think it's just align, align and align B are way the heck down uh, in the parameters. So you would want to jump directly to them by going to the Zim Duo technique. But anyway, that is how you can tile for art. What if you wanted to tile for something unique? Then it's a little bit different. So let's redo all this stuff. Boop, boop. Um, if you wanted to tile for, uh, say, a bunch of components, and this is quite handy, then it might look like this. New dial. And then we could say how many we want. We want four, and we want only one row. And for the spacing, we will go with 50. And we won't bother with the horizontal. Well, we'll put in the horizontal spacing of zero, or sorry, the vertical spacing of zero, but that, that won't matter. And there we are centering that. So that looks like this now. We've got a bunch of dials in there. Great. Uh, that works OK if you want a bunch of dials. If you wanted a dial and a slider and a number stepper, you know, various items, then you would pass them in not as an array, because this is what would happen. New dial, comma, um, a new uh, stepper. Well, we'll use a, um, what's that thing called? A toggle. Okay, so here we have an array of things, a dial and a toggle. Well, the array just chooses randomly from those things. That's what the Zim V value does for an array. So in this case, it shows all toggles. Nice alignment on the toggles. There it shows all dials. I'm not sure why we're getting a different alignment as um, the secondary tiles come in. But as you can see, they're they're not uh, they're not consistent. So it's randomly picking from those things. If we did a series like so, then it would do those in order. We'd always get the dial, then the toggle, then the dial, then the toggle. Oops. Jeez. Dial, then toggle, dial, then toggle. Every time I refresh, it's just running it from, from that series. But one of the problems with this is it's still cloning. So unfortunately, if we were to define a dial up here and add an event to it, when it clones, it doesn't clone the event. So we could add the events after. In the loop, we could go through and access each one of these and add the events after. Or we could tur turn cloning off. If we turn cloning off, we would, uh, we would not have enough 
Oh, yeah, we would. If we turn cloning off, oh, no, I can't remember. But uh, it may be stuck just doing two of them then. Pulls from the series. I think cloning um, will still clone from, from the series even if we turned it off. I, I just I can't remember for sure. But anyway, we came up with a solution to the, the clone problem, and that is unique. If we say unique here, then we pass in an array. So what unique allows us to do is provide a, an array of objects. And watch what happens if we do this now. Uh, we don't get any. That's the wrong place for unique, maybe. We want to say true there for unique. Sorry. And we refresh here. And we only get two of them because we, uh, we only provided two in the list, even though we asked for four. So for unique, you would have to uh, build more of them in this array. But the neat thing about it is that you can put events on those. So if we were to build the array outside of here, like mm, const controls is equal to an array, then we can build the dial and put the change event right on it. A new dial, we can dot change here like this. And in the change, we can call an arrow function and collect the event object E. And we can ask for zog e.target.current value. OK, great. And then we can make another one. Uh, we could make a toggle a couple toggles. And these could also be unique. Uh, um, well, they, they, they will be unique, but sorry, they could also get an event. And let's let's do this one where we put an event on this dial right here. So this one will make zog red. Uh, you can hit the R. And this one will zog blue. Okay, so the first dial we're going to be getting values from, and the second, second dial in there we'll get values from. Then we throw this array into the tile. What was it called? Controls. Like so. Okay, so we have some controls and we want to basically tile these with a spacing of 50. Or we could have done two by two, for instance, as well. Let's have a look at that and refresh. Ew, we could use um, some more vertical spacing, it looks like 50. And we can also adjust alignment on the tiles. But now let's have a look at what we get, F11, F12. And when we change this one, we get blue going up. And when we change this one, we get red going up. That's great. What that means is even though we're passing in an array, which would normally just pick randomly from it and normally just clone. If we cloned, we wouldn't have these events. Even though we put these events on here, when we clone them, we don't get the events anymore. So that's what was happening to us. It was like, ah, we want to pass in some things to lay out with the tile, but the tile is cloning them. So we lose all the events on them. It's like, it's annoying. <laughs> so you lose all sort of custom properties. So what we, um, did instead is added this true parameter. It means that you want to pass in an array of as many things as you're asking for, two by two in this case, or indeed it could have been four by one. Like so it would have been fine too. And now there we are getting that one. And here we are getting the second value as well. And we're good to go. So that's some of the nuances as we're building a tile. The tile can also do uh, a number of responsive things with respect to the layout. Here's an example right here. So in the docs, this is the link to a dynamic example, which we added a little bit later in Zim. So here we are doing this thing called spreading the width. So if we open this right up, the width of the tile. These things are now spaced out in there so that it's uh, roughly even spacing. So the, the width has been spread. And if we shrink it, they bump together. So you see how the spacing in there is smaller now. And uh, basically it's collapsed like that. There's also squeeze width. So when we squeeze the width, watch what happens. This is the same. 
So all this stuff is the same, but watch, as we squeeze further, this one squeezes the width as well. So this whole row is squeezing where this row has already reached a maximum. Okay, isn't that neat? And if we don't spread the width, then you can see that we've squeezed the width here and then we can do the alignment. So there's a left align, a right align. We can align the, to the top. So now it's all lined top, lined in the center and aligned at the bottom. So there's the alignment that goes along with that. So we've got squeezing and width. If you ever want it to wrap, then go to a Zim wrapper. If you want special layout, then go to the layout class. So the layout class has, um, it's the sort of res responsible for these regions. You can set paddings on regions, and, or I guess it's margins on regions, um, max widths, min widths, uh, vertical, horizontal layout. So that's our sort of more mobile ready stuff is uh, called layout. But tile might get you there because as, as you can see, when we say spread width, we would be spreading out our design. We just don't have as much control over the design. You can pass in Zim V values. And that's one thing that we wanted to mention with tiles. That's what we were using uh, as examples there. The Zim V values would uh, go in go in the object that you're tiling that can have Zim V values that gets us our different size circles our different color circles all that kind of stuff um, you can also go to call span and row span or no not call span and row span column and rows so there's the width parameters let's go take a look in the documents here if we scroll on down there's various squeeze call size and row size they accept Zim V values so that means we could use a series of column sizes, 100, 200, 100, 400, and that would make column sizes in that order. And as a matter of fact, if you had more columns, it would, it would repeat that. But presumably this would be when we might have four columns. We could then hard code various column sizes as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, by the way, you can hard code that and run a fit. So right now we're centering, but if you do just scale to like that, we could scale to the stage and any percentage, like 90%, that gets a, a padding a bit on the right or margin on the right, or and 90. So this would fit within any enemy dot center. Okay, let's see what this looks like. I can't remember. Let's put an outline on this so we can kind of um, see that better dot outline like so um, well yeah okay we refresh here we're not going to see oh, gosh darn it gosh darn it uh there it is fitting what happened to the outline dot outline does scale too okay we're going to do the outline after we do this stuff the, there's a little message right now that's saying outline should be on the stage first so there it is outlined all right, so we fit we fit our our tile into this stage size, and what that means is if if we weren't like this this would make sense if we didn't have the fit mode. So that's why I was humming and hawing. Our scaling is with a fit mode. We would want full mode there, and so this makes more sense with the full mode where we might change the scale. However, watch us change our scale. Oh, nothing's happening. Well, why is that? We should know. In full mode, we would have to say uh, frame dot on resize like so. Uh, call this arrow function, and in there we would basically do the same thing again. I guess we can outline it again too. See that outline change, and this is the tile, which is called tile. So we may as well not even do it there. I think the resize gets called automatically, as far as I know. And we might want a stage dot update there. Okay, let's have a look. We refresh, and there it is fitting. And as I um, scale here, it is indeed fitting. And look at that. Uh, that's what the, the scale 2 is doing. It's allowing us to scale that way as well. So possibly, if you wanted, here's, here's our dial set up on a long horizontal phone. Here's the dial set up on an iPad. You know, what can you do? It's, it's as, wide as, the, as wide as the screen. So for a responsive design, that's pretty good. For adaptive design, 
you might want to choose something different. Obviously for um, vertical layout, we might want to adjust these so that they run vertically rather than horizontally, for instance. But in terms of responsive design, it is scaling to fit, and this is the tile, and all that has opened up. Alrighty, good. Well, anyway, uh, if you do want wrapping, remember, go to the uh, go to the wrapper. And that is uh, probably about good enough for information on the tile. I know this was pretty lengthy, uh, but hopefully that it's fairly full, complete information on the Zim tile. I am Dr. Abstract for Zim at zimjs.com. Come on in, join us at zimjs.com slash slack if you have any other questions. We've certainly used tile a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Ciao.